the sky on the day of my mother's funeral was calm and clear. Just when I thought I could send my mother off peacefully, I ran into the predatory woman. But my new partner will be fine. I've learned my lesson. It won't go down like last time. Well, just watch it. I'm Abigail, 30 years old. My father passed away when I was young, so it's just been my mother and me all this time. I've always tried to act cheerfully so as not to worry my mother. However, being a single parent household has its struggles. There have been tough times. But my best friend has been my emotional support. That's Natalie. Natalie is the same age as me and was raised by a single parent like I was. The difference is that Natalie's mom left, but because we had similar situations, we've been close friends since middle school, supporting each other. Natalie is truly a good person. If only she didn't have that one bad habit. Natalie was a woman who loved to steal. If I happened to say, that senior is handsome, isn't he? Natalie would immediately respond with, Abigail, do you like him? So do I. Maybe I should ask him on a date. You're not dating yet, so it's fine, right? It's still okay at this level, I suppose. By the way, Natalie has always had a very girly vibe, and she's been popular with guys since forever. Whenever Natalie goes after someone, I can't help but back off. Since middle school, the guys I liked and the guys Natalie liked always overlapped, and it was always Natalie who ended up dating them. Even someone like me had been in a relationship during high school. I was asked on a date by a senior who was a year older than me. I kept this a secret from Natalie. It wasn't because there was any deep meaning behind not telling my best friend. I just felt shy about it. But even though I tried to hide it, she found out right away. Oh. Really? Wow, Abigail, I thought you didn't have a crush on anyone because you haven't been talking about it lately. Well, I felt shy. But from now on, we can both walk home with our boyfriends, right? Yeah, right. Natalie said with a smile. But. I would soon find out the reason behind my best friend's smile. Whenever my boyfriend and I were leaving school, Natalie started coming home with us too. Huh? Where's your boyfriend? Aren't you going home together? He said he had something to do. So, I thought I'd join you guys. I'm not trying to get in the way or anything. I just want to be friends with your boyfriend. She said, and she started following us wherever we went. One day, my senior boyfriend called me out. Abigail, I'm sorry. I've decided to date Natalie. What? I'm really sorry. I thought of her as just a friend, but my feelings for her grew beyond that. And then Natalie told me too. Abigail, I'm sorry. I just can't help but love him. If you could forgive me, we could be happy together. She pleaded with a tearful face. It was a shock, but if the other two were in love with each other, then I'd just be in the way. So, reluctantly, I said, okay, and forgave them both. After that, Natalie continued to treat me as usual, and I made an effort to do the same. Then, after graduating from high school, Natalie started working, and I went to a distant university for further studies, so we naturally drifted apart. It was quite unexpected when I bumped into Natalie again two years after graduating from university and starting my job. At that time, I had a fiancé. 
My fiancé was a senior from my college days and currently works for a trading company. I decided to introduce him to my mother, so I took him to my hometown. After finishing the greetings at home, we decided to take a break at a nearby cafe, where I unexpectedly ran into Natalie. At first, I didn't notice her, but she approached me. Hey. Abigail. Long time no see. You haven't changed at all. Huh? Natalie? It's been a while. How have you been? You haven't contacted me at all since you went to university. I've been so lonely. Sorry, sorry, I've been busy with one thing and another since university. I see, well, I guess that's how it goes. So, who's this? Oh, let me introduce you. This is my fiancé. We came to visit my mother today. Ha, huh, you're getting married. That's kind of fast, considering you just started working, right? Yeah, but we've been together since university. Plus, I can continue working even after getting married, so I thought why not do it now? Oh, I see. While saying that, she stared at my fiancé as if she was evaluating him. She created a much more feminine aura than she did in high school. It seemed like she knew how to present herself to look beautiful. She asked my fiancé, looking up at him. What kind of work do you do? Since you're getting married, I assume you have a stable job with a decent income, right? My fiancé responded. I'm just a salesperson. But the company itself is listed on the first section of the stock exchange and is quite well known. He then handed his business card to her. Oh, don't be so modest. I could tell from the moment I saw you that you had an elite vibe. And you look handsome too. She said to my fiancé with a rather exaggerated reaction. As I listened to the conversation as if I weren't there, I was hit with a sense of deja vu. Yes, this was how Natalie always took away the person I liked. This might not end well if I let it continue like this. So, I intervened. All right, shall we head back now? I prompted my fiancé to leave. He agreed with a nod and began to prepare to leave. Oh, already? That's too bad. She said. Well then, make sure to invite me to the wedding. She said it, which made me think my worries were unfounded. A few days later, my doorbell rang. When I answered it, there was Natalie. It seems she contacted my mother and asked for my address. Since we used to be close, my mother probably gave it to her without any suspicion. Hey, I came over. I had some business in this area, and also, I didn't get to properly congratulate you last time. She said while looking around my room. Is this room just for you, Abigail? Will you move when you get married? Yes. Will it be an apartment? I guess. That's the plan. I see. I looked up your fiancé's company. Salespeople there make around $80,000 a year, right? That's amazing. Ah, I envy you. I wish I could live in a nice apartment with a high-earning husband too. Feeling uncomfortable, I tried to change the subject. So, what about you, Natalie? Are you married? Do you have someone you're dating? I am seeing someone, but his salary isn't that great. The conversation wasn't flowing smoothly. I hadn't even asked about salaries. But Abigail, you're lucky. Your fiancé makes $80,000 a year, 
so you'll have an easy life after marriage. Huh? I wasn't choosing my partner based on their salary. At that moment, my fiancé happened to contact me, and since it was a good opportunity, we decided to have dinner together with the three of us. How did it end up like that? Looking back, Natalie always knows how to maneuver things in her favor. By the time you realize it, it's already too late. Just like before, Natalie doesn't let her prey escape once she's targeted them. Especially if it's something belonging to her best friend. A few months later, my fiancé suddenly said something like this to me. Abigail, I'm sorry. I can't marry you. Huh? What do you mean? I'm really sorry. Actually, I hate to say this, but I'm going to marry Natalie. What? Why? Since when have you two been involved? Remember when Natalie came over and we had dinner together? She said she wanted to surprise you at the wedding, so we exchanged contact information. We met several times for planning. And one time, Natalie got drunk and we ended up at a hotel. After that, I'm really sorry. Isn't this just a mistake? Don't you love me anymore? I'm sorry, Abigail. I do love you. But, Natalie is pregnant with my child. What? I felt the blood drain from my face. I feel really terrible about this. We've been planning the wedding all this time. Of course, I'll cover the cancellation fees. I was stupid. When I ran into Natalie by chance, I should have just thrown water on her and run away. But no, she even had the audacity to visit my apartment. I didn't want to see her. Abigail, I'm sorry. I just couldn't help falling for him. I'm pregnant with his child. Please forgive me. She said, tears streaming down her face. But I'm the one who wants to cry. I don't want to see you anymore. Don't come here again. That's all I managed to say. Work became my only solace. I had always planned to continue working even after marriage, but after the affair, I threw myself even more into my job. In the blink of an eye, five years have passed. Contrary to thinking that I would distance myself from romance because of working hard, that wasn't the case at all. I got married two years ago. My partner is Sam, the legal advisor at my workplace. As I handle general affairs, I had frequent interactions with the legal advisor. He always showed concern for me, and after several dinners together, he confessed his feelings, leading us to marriage. Married life is enjoyable, and my career continues to progress smoothly. I no longer dwell on the events of five years ago. However, it's not all sunshine and rainbows. Even after being alone at home, my mother continued to work energetically and enjoy her life. However, she was diagnosed with terminal cancer. Treatment was no longer feasible. I burst into tears, but my mother smiled and said, Having you in my life has brought me happiness. Thank you. I want to be surrounded by family at the end. So, I made sure to spend as much time as possible at home, and I was there to care for my mother in her final moments. Today is my mother's funeral. The sky is clear, and I believe my mother will peacefully ascend to heaven. However, I couldn't believe my eyes. Natalie was among the attendees. Why are you here? Well, your mother passed away, right? I used to be taken care of by her, 
so I thought I'd pay my respects. She said with a smile. Then, I saw a gleam in her eyes. Her gaze was fixed on my husband, who was standing next to me. Does she know something and came to the funeral with a clear purpose in mind? Oh. Is this your husband by any chance? Abigail, you got married? Yes, since then. Are you getting along well with your husband? Oh, we're splitting up. Huh? But what about the child? If you were pregnant back then, they'd be about four years old, right? Huh. Um. I don't have any children. It seems I just convinced myself I was pregnant. Huh? I went through a tough time too, you know. I truly believed I was pregnant. But anyway, it's all in the past now. That's why I'm single now. She said while staring intently at my husband. So, what does your husband do? Here we go. There seem to be quite a few women with a penchant for stealing partners out there. However, trying to steal from the same person twice is something only a woman like her, standing right in front of me, would do. And this time, it's not just a fiancé. It's a spouse. But I'm not a fool anymore. I will stand up to her. He is a lawyer, I replied. Upon hearing that he's a lawyer, she couldn't help but take the bait. Wow. A lawyer means a pretty high income, right? Lucky you. As always, she seems fixated on income. Despite there being plenty of lawyers with modest incomes, that thought doesn't seem to cross her mind. I responded, It's not as glamorous as it sounds. Besides, he's often busy with various legal procedures. I then prompted Sam for agreement. Exactly. It may sound good, but it's not an easy job. But isn't being a lawyer pretty secure? By the way, Abigail, are you still working? Of course. I love my job. Oh, I see. And what about you, Natalie? Are you working? I'm doing temp work, but it's all about the paycheck, you know. Being single is tough. I wish there was someone nice around. She said, while staring at Sam. Sensing things about to escalate, I interjected. Well, I should greet the other attendees. I then excused myself from the conversation with Natalie and said to Sam. Sorry, but could you handle this for a bit? I continued to greet the neighbors and colleagues who had taken care of my mother one by one. At that moment, when I glanced over at my husband, Natalie was still there by his side. Truly, she was the queen of conquests. She never lets her target slip away, even if it's someone else's husband. It bothered me, of course, but right now, I needed to focus on fulfilling my duties as the chief mourner. A little while later, Natalie approached me. Done with the greetings? I got a business card from your husband earlier and did some research. He works at a major law firm, right? His salary must be around $200,000, isn't it? Impressive. So what? I intentionally replied bluntly, and Natalie chuckled, saying, Oops, my bad. Looks like I'll be getting another one. She smirked. What? Get what? Even though I knew, I couldn't help but ask. Of course, your husband with a salary of $200,000. Abigail, you really have strong luck, huh? I'm impressed you found such a good partner. 
Does that include your husband too? Of course. Being with you means I can easily get any good man I want. Once they experience my charm, they're hooked. She said triumphantly. It seems that's exactly why she bothered to come to the funeral. I looked her straight in the eye and told her. Well, I don't think Sam will ever fall for that. Ha, huh, then I'll just steal him away. With a triumphant smile, she then walked over to Sam again. Watching closely, I saw her immediately initiate physical contact. Then, suddenly, she started crying. Sam seemed to be somewhat shaken by this. According to what I heard later, Natalie began to cry, expressing sympathy for me as someone left behind, saddened by the passing of the mother who had taken care of her. It seems Natalie knew how to use tears to attract men. But it's okay. It doesn't work on Sam. Although there was a moment of concern, he's truly my husband after all. I had been completely open with Sam about Natalie's story of seduction. When we discussed marriage, I shared my not-so-pleasant experiences and passed with him openly. I figured if it didn't work out, then so be it. Sam was already aware that he was a target himself. Still, she is quite an enemy. Despite knowing this, some men might fall into Natalie's trap. But Sam is different. However, seeing poor Sam entangled with this troublesome woman, I went to his rescue. He noticed me and looked relieved. When I asked Natalie if she had enjoyed the conversations, she looked frustrated. I supposed she finally realized there was no chance. After all, you aren't invincible. Then Sam tiredly spoke his mind. Ah, uh, since Abigail's here, I don't have to deal with you anymore, right? Yeah, thanks for your hard work. Huh. Not having to deal with me. Isn't that a bit rude? I'm sorry, I know it's rude, but I just couldn't take it anymore. Natalie, your scent is just too overpowering. I don't know if it's perfume or makeup, but you keep touching me without permission, and the smell is spreading over here, it's making me nauseous. Ugh. Sam's voice unintentionally grew louder due to the overwhelming discomfort, and it seemed like others around could hear it too. Despite being at a funeral, chuckles and laughter could be heard in response to the situation. Still holding his nose, Sam continued. Do you even know how to apply perfume properly? You only need a tiny bit. But you, it's like you've poured the whole bottle over yourself from head to toe. Actually, Sam, being a lawyer, seems friendly at first glance, but he can be quite sharp-tongued. I've been putting up with it because you're my wife's friend, but I can't stand it anymore. I burst out laughing upon hearing this. Those who were eavesdropping around us also burst into laughter. Natalie glanced around with a seemingly puzzled expression, so I explained to her what was going on. I'm sorry, but Sam has a rather sensitive sense of smell. He doesn't mind perfume if it's subtle, but strong scents aren't his cup of tea. Huh. Well, Natalie, You've come to a funeral with a scent and makeup that aren't quite appropriate. What are you talking about? It's just basic etiquette for a woman to look her best, isn't it? Huh? This is a place to bid farewell to the deceased, not to fish for men. Wearing strong perfume like that here is a breach of etiquette. What? Are you lecturing me? You can say that because you've snagged yourself a high-earning husband, right? You know, I'm not choosing my partner based on their paycheck. And if you think you can win over every man, that's just pure narcissism. My husband would never fall for you. Why not? 
Because Sam likes the complete opposite of you. Oh. Well, you seem like the kind of plain type you'd find anywhere, I suppose. Are you implying that I'm different from you in terms of feminine allure? What a rude woman she is. Well, thank you for that. Indeed, I may look plain, but I'm capable when it comes to work. I'm a career woman, you see. Oh, I shouldn't boast about myself like that. Huh. So, my husband prefers ambitious, hard-working types like that. He's not interested in someone like you who's satisfied with just a temporary job. Someone who's eager to marry right away but content with a temporary position like you is absolutely not his type, right? In fact, he'd probably dislike that type. Sam, listening beside me, nods in agreement. What did you say? Natalie seems to have been attracting men based solely on their appearance, but Sam was someone who truly appreciated inner qualities. It was because of Sam's character that I found the courage to step into marriage. That's why I had confidence this time that Natalie wouldn't be able to sway him. However, Hey, Natalie. Today is my mother's important funeral. If you don't have the intention to respectfully bid farewell to her, please leave. With that, Natalie bit her nails and left reluctantly, looking frustrated. Afterwards, my mother's funeral proceeded smoothly, and we were able to bid her farewell without any worries. Despite a few minor troubles, it ended well. Perhaps today, my encounter with Natalie here was thanks to my mother. Maybe she brought Natalie here so I could reaffirm my current happiness and finally let go of past unpleasant experiences. Thank you, Mom. Days later, an unexpected revelation came to light. It turns out Natalie is being sued for a substantial amount of alimony by her ex-husband. This ex-husband happens to be my former fiancé, and this information was shared with me by a mutual acquaintance. The pregnancy that became the deciding factor in our marriage was, unbelievably, a lie fabricated by Natalie. While she told me she believed she was pregnant, she had actually deceived her partner by showing him ultrasound images and other evidence, only to later admit that it was all a fabrication. Furthermore, the catalyst for this lie being exposed was Natalie's infidelity. Initially, Natalie's ex-husband, believing she was pregnant, refrained from traveling or going out much out of concern for her well-being. Well, he was a kind-hearted person, after all. However, that turned out to be unexpected for Natalie. Feeling bored, Natalie reportedly started cheating with someone else. Moreover, she later claimed to have had a miscarriage and used it as an excuse to indulge in buying luxury items using her ex-husband's credit cards to distract herself from the sadness. It seems her ex-husband was lenient, thinking it was unavoidable if she had a miscarriage. However, it was all Natalie's lies, and she even used her ex-husband's credit cards to buy luxury items for her affair partner. As her extravagant spending habits raised suspicions, her ex-husband began to doubt her and reportedly installed cameras to gather evidence of her infidelity. In addition, conversations between Natalie and her affair partner revealed that the pregnancy was a lie, leaving her ex-husband deeply hurt. He is now seeking compensation for his emotional distress as part of the alimony claim. As a result, Natalie had been looking for someone who can financially support her enough to offset the compensation she owes, and it seems she had her eye on Sam. But, too bad. He loves me who works so hard so he has no interest whatsoever in Natalie who has become obsessed with money. Ultimately, Natalie ended up being demanded a considerable amount of compensation, leading to their divorce. Now, she lives modestly in a small apartment, working as a temporary worker during the day and at a club at night, 
struggling with debt. It seems that the consequences of her past actions have caught up with her all at once. Despite her previous indulgence in luxury items and enjoyable moments with her affair partner, it's a lonely end for the avaricious woman. Hopefully, she can catch a rich one. Meanwhile, I continue to enjoy my work as usual. My husband supports me in my endeavors and sometimes even helps with household chores or cooks delicious meals, so we're happily spending time together as a couple. It seems that the stork has visited us, too. But even after giving birth, I'll continue with my work. I'm sure my husband will support me.